have a real affection for the story of the wise men. I'm not entirely sure why, but I think it's because for all their mystery and exoticness, they're very human. So I thought I'd just pick out a few points and pose a question for you about each point. So, first of all, the wise men set out to follow a star. Something happened in the skies they studied that made them wonder. Something that made them so restless that they had to leave behind all they knew and travel to they didn't know where. I often wonder what they did with the experience that they had when they returned home. We don't know, but we do know that for a moment in time something wonderful happened and they fell down and worshipped a baby. God is found in the moments of wonder that make us stop and ponder the mystery. I wonder what have been your awakening moments of wonder that have led you more deeply into a mystery. The second point is the light of this star was seen in darkness, for that's when we see stars. Did they only travel by night? If not, how did they find their way in the daytime? I feel there was some incongruity for them, that the daylight hours were somehow their dark times when they didn't really know clearly where they were going. And in these darker moments, they trusted that the light would still be found. How or when have you experienced the dark and where or how? Did you recognise the light? Next, they travelled together. We don't know how many of them there were, but maybe we can picture this little community that they became as they travelled together, sharing this experience. 
Did they set off, set off together or did they meet on the way, discovering that they were each pursuing a common purpose? Different people from different backgrounds, but together they made their way to Bethlehem to worship this baby king. Their quest for truth and meaning brought them together. Doubtless they understood what happened in different ways. Doubtless the effect on their lives was different, but together their journey must have had more meaning. I wonder what that has to say to us today. The star that they found didn't lead them to the right place. So they asked questions when they were lost. Actually, I suspect that it wasn't the star that led them to the wrong place, but their own preconceptions about where and how the event would be expected to take place. But continuing to make sense of where they were and where they were being led, they looked for help. I wonder what questions you live with. I wonder what preconceptions we have that keep us from understanding where God really is. All didn't go exactly as they would have planned, for they meet King Herod on the way. For his own reasons of power and control, he tried to deceive them. We need to recognise the twisted value systems of our world and not get caught in them or be misled by them. I wonder in what ways we get pulled off course. When the wise men arrived, it must have been a strange moment. Was this really what they travelled so far for? Had they got it right? Yet falling on their knees, they worshipped the baby, a moment beyond intellectual understanding and of recognition. They bowed down in adoration. Maybe we can imagine that moment of knowing and the deep silence. I wonder how we cultivate those moments where we can have knowing recognition of where God is. And that moment of knowing demanded a response and they offered their gifts. They brought gold for a king, but a different kind of king. So they also brought frankincense. This was used for worship then as it still is in some places. They brought myrrh, which was burnt at funerals and placed with the dead for burial. Valuable things, yet strange gifts for a baby, but prophetic ones. Prophetic gifts from people way outside Jewish culture. Gifts which we may regard as useless to a young couple with a young son who were soon to have to flee for their lives, leaving a scene of terror behind them. We don't always see the value of the gifts we have to bring. I wonder what we are offering of our time and material possessions. Another thing about the wise men is that they were foreigners. We don't even know where they were from. It seems that they were astrologers, men who studied the stars, seeking for a better understanding of the world they lived in. They engaged with the universe created by the God they almost certainly didn't acknowledge. Or did they? There are massive differences in the ways that different religions interpret God, but there are massive similarities too. There was something about the star, something about the heavens, something about the core of their understanding that unsettled them and sent them on a quest. They were seekers after truth and they came not to conquer, not to subdue, not to plunder, but to offer and to worship. The gifts of the Magi, the wise men, were not presents, but offerings. Offerings of the best that they could find. I wonder what unsettles you to the extent that you'll leave behind all you've known to seek after a truth that you also don't know. And finally, in a dream, they're shown the truth. Because of the danger, they're warned to return by a different route. That's the way it often is with God. We're not allowed to go back the same way as we arrived. We're never allowed to go as we came. Not just once, but time and time again. And if we truly encounter God, then we are changed people. 
and so still at the start of a new year. I wonder how we're going to let God change us. I wonder how we're going to be open to God's changing power working in our own lives and in the lives of our churches. Because with God, staying the same is just not an option. Let us pray. Wise God, you are older than the ages and you dance in the starlight and you love us. Wise God, you share your bread with strangers and you welcome little children and you understand us. Wise God, you wrestle with the powerful and you comfort all who need you and you disturb us. Wise God, shining in darkness, seen by those who love you, found by those who seek you, we are here to learn from you. Kings and nations, weak and powerful, are coming to meet with God. Sons and daughters, rich and needy, all are coming to meet with God. Strong and mighty, weak and gentle, all are coming to meet with God. Starshine, moonshine, sunshine, we will walk with God. Mountains, main roads, side tracks, we will walk with God. Questions, answers, mysteries, we will walk with God. Onwards, homewards, we will walk with God. Loving God, we offer to you this world, a world that needs the truth, a world that needs to seek, a world that needs to understand that mystery is just what it is, mystery, that sometimes we will not know, but always we must trust. So we offer you this time and our thoughts and our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.